Mexico Ocean Alliance, the Mexico chapter, which has actually just launched and they've done an amazing job um, awareness about ocean conservation in Mexico. So um, they will be our moderators. Well, hi everyone. Um, it's a pleasure for me to be here and I hope all of you are safe and doing great. And it's also a pleasure to be sharing this session with all of you. Uh, and I already say, my name is Ray Rodriguez. I'm 20 years old and I'm more than happy to connect with you today. And I really hope you enjoyed the session and that we can come up with a lot of ideas, a lot of um, kind of like a little bit of a debate so that we can all share um, what we what we believe on and that we can uh, make connections. Thank you for being here. So hi everybody, I hope you're fine. As Anna say, and thank you for the introduction. My name is Alma Macias, I am from Mexico. I'm 23 years old and I am an undergraduate student of marine biology and part of SOA Mexico with Ibrahim. The aim of this session is to expand your network to meet another young leaders who are interested in the conservation of our oceans and environment. Great, so now what we're gonna do is to sort of like, uh, our, we're gonna do something real quick in order to get to know each other a little bit better. We'll, um, well, how many people are here? There are 15, I think we could do it in this session. It's gonna take like five minutes. We are gonna, um, be sharing our name, uh, where do we come from, our favorite marine animal, and what we are the most passionate about. And feel free to start, whoever wants to start, or if you want me, I can go for it. Um, well, my name is Irai, I'm from Ecuador. Um, my favorite marine animal is, well, there are sea turtles, and what I'm most passionate about is the ocean, plastic pollution, how it affects people, how it affects the environment as well, and also how we all as youth can be part of the solution and not just part of the problem. Awesome. <laughs> my name is Anna Hanhausen. I'm from Mexico City. And my favorite marine animal, I think that's a really hard question, but I'm going to have to go with corals and whales. <laughs> now, um, who's next? If you want to call uh, names, it might get easier. Yeah, that's a good idea. So, yeah. Michelle, would you like to go next? Yes. Hi, everyone. I'm Michelle. I'm from Mexico, too. And my favorite animal, ocean sea animal, sorry, it's a uh, turtle, sea turtle, too. And what I'm passionate about is protect all the, the biodiversity in our planet. I want to pass the floor to Drisha. Thank you. Thank you, Michelle. Hello, I'm Drisha Pakak. I'm from India. And uh, like, I love all the animals, basically. But the two most favorite are one dog and one dolphin. They both are on the top. <laughs> Thank you. I would like to pass it on to um, Ivan. Hello, um, I'm Ivan from Mexico. I'm a biologist, special, well, cellular and molecular biologist specialized in sustainable development. And I don't know, is there anything, something missing for the presentation? Sorry. You, you yes. have to tell us names of two, I mean, uh, uh, animal species or uh, that, that you love the most or like the most. Dogs, by far. I really love dogs. I mean, I love pretty much all the animals, but I'm particularly fond of dogs. And I will say tlacuaches as well, which are possums. Now I have to say a name so other people can... Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry. 
I was just saying that Anna just mentioned that we need to name a marine animal, not any animal. Sorry. Then uh, killer whales. I really love them. And seals. And now choose who goes next. You ha you can choose. Next. Um, let me see. Has Neda gone already? Please. Hi, everyone. Um, Nalina Midaho. I'm from Uganda. Um, Uganda really doesn't have light water bodies. We do have lakes and rivers and swamps. Um, however, yes, the marine animal I would like to protect is the fish. And by fish, we mostly have the Nile patch and tilapia. So I believe they are the ones that are facing the impact of the mishandling of plastics in Uganda. So yes. Mira, you can decide who, who's going to go next, please. Um, Kamal. Kamal. Oh, yes. Brother Kamal, your turn. Oh, yes. Uh, so good to connect with you, Kamal. Yeah, so good to see you, Ash. Thank so you very much. Good to see you. Wonderful opportunity. Thank yeah. you so much, brother. Yeah, thank you so much. My name is Kamal. I'm from Nigeria, but I'm living in Turkey. I'm a member of so many organizations such as uh, World Merit. And at the same time, I'm working in Turkey for New World, called New World Foundation. I'm working on formal education. And uh, my favorite marine animal, well, um, let's say whales. Yeah, thank you, yeah. That's wonderful. Yeah. Uh, you, you decide who's going to go next, Brother Kamal. Uh, I think um, Bukola. Bukola. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Hi. Kamal, thank you so much for passing. I, I was I almost thought you were going to do that. I actually did because I was wondering who you're gonna call. So good to be here. My name is Bukola Laliri from Ward Mary, Nigeria. I'm the country council president. And um my favorite marine animal, I'll go with Kamal as well, whales. Great. Thank now you. you can choose who you want to go next. Okay. I would um, pick Oluwatoyo Sibakari. Hello, everyone. Thank you, Bukola. I, like you, I was expecting that. Okay, so my name is Oluwatoyo Sibakari. I'm from Nigeria. And um, let's see. My favorite marine animal. Again, I'll go with Bukola. I like the whales. And maybe dolphins, actually. Great. Now, who you want to go next? Let me see. Um, I'm not sure. Has Kevin gone yet? Nope. Okay, so over to you, Kevin. Thank you. Um, hi, my name is Kevin Morales. I'm from Mexico. I'm a biologist. And I would say my my um, favorite is difficult, but I think probably my favorite is marine animals would be uh, killer whales and polar bears. Um, I don't know if Lina Rojas has already presented herself. I have not. Um, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Lina Rojas. I'm originally from Colombia, South America, but I do live in the US in Atlanta, Georgia. And as far as my favorite animal, um, I would say it's the whale shark. I find it uh, incredibly captivating. So, um, and in other areas, things that I am very passionate about is very much learning about new areas, learning about um, 
new ways to make improvements that perhaps, you know, we've tried before, but um, incorporating from other areas and other knowledges from other industries and mixing them with um, new areas that we had not considered before. So that's where my passion truly lies. And as far as next, uh, I don't know if Vanessa Hernandez has already spoken. No. Hi, Lina. <laughs> hey, Vanessa. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, my name is Vanessa Hernandez. I'm from Mexico, and I am studying um, pharmacist, biologist, and chemistry. And the, my favorite animal, um, marine animal, it's the starfish. I think that they, they, they look like really calm, but they have a, an amazing organism and an amazing system. So I like starfish. Thank you so much. I think that, um, I am not sure. Puja, are you there? Puja? Hello everyone. My name is Pooja. I'm from India. I'm 19 years old. So my favorite marine animal is seal. That's great. That's amazing. Who would like to go next? I think we're missing a couple more people. Salma. Okay, I think I'm the last one. Okay, so that is a hard question for me. Actually, I love all the animals. Uh, but I could say that I am marine mammals team and penguins. Well, that's amazing. Did it, did Ash went through or? Sure. Okay, so. My name is Ash and uh, my favorite uh, marine animal, uh, like, like everybody else here, actually I struggle because I'm a big animal lover, um, uh, is actually the shark. I, I am, um, yeah, hugely interested in sharks and have researched them extensively. So yeah, they're my favorite. Thank you. That's amazing. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. And well, I think I'll give the floor to Salma to explain more the dynamics that we're gonna um, start to do it now. So Salma, the floor is yours. Thank you, Iberi. So what we are gonna do is to, well, I don't know if close rooms or just leave it up in the main session and ask you a few questions to, in order to meet each other and expand our network. So I'm gonna share my screen. Do you see it? Okay. So the first question, do you wanna leave it up here or break up rooms? Mm, I think it actually it'd be better if we just do it here i mean we're like 18 people we can just discuss it here and have like a plenty of more room for people to share their ideas so here okay so let's do it the first question what well, solutions could contribute to the problematics of the topics you are passionate about and have you seen one in your community
That's great. That's amazing. Well, I, I can share some of my ideas too. So um, as well as Anna, I'm really passionate about the ocean in general, but some of the issues that affect most here, at least in my community, are plastic pollution. And well, that's actually something I'd like to discuss because this plastic waste does not come, I mean, 50% of it might come from our community, but 50% of like the, the other 50% could come from with, within the currents. I mean, they can come from other countries. They could come from, well, especially China and Asia countries. Those are the most uh, common um, like waste trademarks that we found in our beaches because they come with the currents. And also some solutions that we could find um, here is like people, especially youth, go into the beach and do some cleanups. They start to share uh, their ideas with the community. And also they... I mean, they, um, they, they teach you like really interesting facts about the ocean and also how plastic pollution can affect the species, can affect the communities. And that's really great. As, and as Anna said, I think education is a key tool that might um, help us solve these um, issues. Perfect. I, I think the other thing is perhaps not something that a lot of people think about that, you know, there's a big connection between no matter where you are and the ocean and also human health. Um, I know, I know it doesn't, it doesn't always sort of happen intuitively. One doesn't think about it, but it is that everything we do in no matter which part of the world uh, ends up being connected with the ocean and uh, somehow affects us, um, you know, in terms of our own health and well-being and certainly that of all other species. I Anyone would else? say, yeah, I would say Please. that as a solution, um, it should be that people change their own uh, lifestyle. Um, and it will link that sometimes we don't see the consequences of what we do in our lives. Uh, and sometimes we just try to solve the problem. For example, if this, there's plastic bottles on the ocean, trying to pick up the plastic that is are on, on the ocean or on the beaches. That's sometimes the, sol the easy solution and the fast solution. But the thing is that if we don't go to the beginning of the problem, then we won't be able to actually solve the problem. So that's how I think um, education is really important for it, about it uh, because we need to try to make people understand that changing their lifestyle, they can make a huge impact. And also that empowers people to do something and to make government and companies to change their processes because they, by changing themselves in deciding whether they buy something or not, they actually make a, a big pressure on governments and companies. I would also like to say that uh, one of the things that could change um, plastic pollution is uh, circular economy. Uh, as many of you know, uh, this is a way in which uh, products are uh, rethinked and revealed. And, well, and not only products, but practices uh, from the companies, and I don't know if we can start thinking about reverse uh, logistics to make products um, have a few, uh, smaller impact or no impact, ideally, at all in the environment. And maybe get the, I mean, make the, the plastic in this case remain in the, like in the, um, supply chain as much as possible or to return it to the to the companies maybe if you get it from a store in, in the in, from a supermarket maybe you can return the plastic to the supermarket who is then going to return the product to the, the plastic to the um, producer and maybe uh, in this way we, if you return this to the, to the supermarket they can give you back some of the money that you spend on the, per, in the on the product because you are going to get, I mean, you buy the product, let's say food, to eat it, and you are not going to eat the package. So uh, you are going to return that, and hopefully they can do something else with that. 
So I think uh, rethinking the way of producing and consuming is key to achieve this. Um, may I speak? Yeah. Sure. So, go for it. So uh, as a as a kid, I I grew up in the UK, uh, and uh, I used to live in this city called Belfast, and uh, there was really close to the ocean. So I used to live like right beside a beach, and I I still remember that as a kid, um, all these primary schoolers as like uh, fifty little kids just wearing their raincoats and their wellies and uh, you know, just uh, holding each other's hand in a straight line with uh, one lovely lady at the end of the line. Just like we used to go on, on a beach uh, every Sunday, uh, 7 a.m. I remember, and we used to pick up on the trash on the beach. And this is a beach that we used almost daily because it was like right beside uh, our school. And um, yeah, that was one of the first memories I had probably. And one of the, when it was a very unique solution uh, that was tackling also the trash that ended up on the beach. And um, as a kid, like now I really can't stand anything on that, any trash that's on the beach, even though now I'm in New Delhi, which is a landlocked city. Every time I'm on the streets, I, I, when I see uh, litter around, I, I tend to pick up because, because that was a habit that was inculcated by just one lovely lady taking us on the beach every Sunday. And I think my generation, um, is do, having a lot of change in that in that area because uh, we see a single photo of a turtle stuck in a net, uh, you know those um, the nets that come with the uh, Coca Cola bottles, the six piece bottles, and um, everybody uh, in my friend circle uh, in the U.S. even uh, in the U.K. I remember seeing them all buying um, these the steel straws, and that's that's really. Um, a different approach to all the, the problems, the problematics that we uh, are very passionate about. Uh, something in which I didn't see my parents indulging in uh, as much. We, every single short um, movement that happens or uh, something that instigates uh, us, it's always on rage on social media and we're always in a positive light to it. And I feel that my generation is really making a bigger impact on that. And we should just uh, keep that, keep moving that forward. Thank you. Yeah, that's amazing. That that was actually like really a really inspiring story. I was like, uh, I was touched by it. Like, uh, and also how people like that sometimes you don't know can come into your life and share their ideas with you and make you like change and think more like environmentally friendly so that that's amazing yes i love that now let's continue with the next question i know that some of you answered this but if someone would like to add something please from your experience how do you think we could develop synergetic with other areas to generate a bigger impact on ocean conservation I like to encourage people that didn't um, talk in the first one, just go for it. Feel free to talk and share your ideas. We're here to listen and to, and to support all, all of your comments. Hi, I, I want to say that I think that we could make a synergetic with the companies to be more responsible of the, the waste, the, all the liquids and with the chemist um, the, um, compounds and uh, um, to make a, a, um, a team that they, they make the responsibility to to clean that um, wastes, to to uh, like um, most of them um, 
lemonade in the rivers and that's bad and to, to make sure that the the conservation starts in the rivers because the rivers always be um, finished in the oceans and that that um, that is a bad for all the animals. <laughs> yeah, I think that it's starting with the companies and the, their waste. Thank you. Anna, sorry, you were saying something? Oh, I was just saying that um, I was telling Mira to go ahead. I don't know if you can hear me. <laughs> Mira. Hi, um, thank you so much, Anna. Um, so basically all that I have come, sorry, let me first, let me first. Thank you so much, Anna. Um, um, so briefly to have the floor. Um, sorry for the inconvenience that took place. I mean, sort of amazing environment. Um, I just made an analysis from the previous session that you had earlier on. We were presenting projects, um, the workshop that you conducted, and um, it just not that it just hit me, but looking at this, I got to realize it's a cycle amongst three people. And throughout the workshop from the beginning till now, it's a cycle amongst three categories of people. First, it's going to come um, to the government. Then it's going to come down to the suppliers of the plastic. And then it's going to come down to the consumers. So um, we are going to have to look at the government. Why? The lawmaking body, and ensures implementation of the laws it has made. We are going to come down to the suppliers, the producing plastics. Most of these entities are meant to have um, laws governing the production of plastics and probably the process till the end. So after you producing plastic, uh -huh, we are going to consume it, what next? Are we going to dump it anyhow? Okay, yes, the lawmaking bodies at this point now have to educate the consumers on how exactly we are going to dump the plastics. First, I'll take an example of Uganda where masses do not know how to sort waste. And I believe it's a general issue all over. Someone will use their plastic and drop them at the bank or a river, at the banks of the seas. So at the end of it all, it all comes back to analysis. Where is the problem? Um, so while we are looking at where is the problem, it comes back at individual level. Okay, I'm a student. I have studied um, the disadvantages of mishandling of plastics to marine and human life. So what am I going to do? Um, have I gotten any content to guide me on what exactly I can do? Can I share it out? So it comes back to the first person who spoke addressing the question. Education. Masses need to be educated on how exactly to deal with these plastics. And governments need to tighten to ensure that the laws that they made, which in most cases are not 100% implemented, and um, most of these um, plastic manufacturing companies uh, decide to look, take it an easy go, easy come and easy go, procedure. They'll make the plastic supply and it ends there. Um, I'll commend a few organizations like uh, plastic producing um, industries like Coca-Cola because most of its products are packaged in plastics. It has a procedure whereby it enables recycling of plastics. It um, laws governing the production of um, commodities provides um, a section whereby the consumers are aware Coca-Cola recycles its plastics. So they do it more, they have a business bond with its consumers, whereby they buy from the uh, manufacturers and the consumers are able to sell back the plastics to the manufacturers as well. So there is just something that 
needs to be shared out or aired out or advocated for and made, and people need to get to know their role play in handling of this plastic at the end of it all. Yeah. That's thoroughly amazing. And also, yeah, I mean, if we, if we come to think of issues, we're just like mainly focusing on major issues, but why, we're, why, why can't we just think of what we do in our daily life that can also affect and contribute to um, issues like pollution or like climate change? Because right now that's like the major one. And well, I'm going to go with the next two questions right now. And I think it would be better if we break out into some rooms right now so that more people can interact. And then we'll come back to the main session and then um, start sharing your ideas, one or two people from the, I mean, one or two persons from that breakout room can share their ideas and also what the others discussed about. And yeah, uh, Salma, can you um, put the next slide so I can share the questions with everyone and that we can go into the next, in the breakout rooms, please? Yes. All right. So, um, the next slide, sure. Yeah, go for the next slide, please. Um, Okay, how can I go to the next slide? Like, um, to, to the next one? I mean, you can press to go to the next slide in your computer, so. I am pressing, but I think that my screen freeze or something like that. Well, it, that's okay, okay. I, can, I, can, uh, I can tell the people the questions. So, um, the first question is, um, from your perspective, have home office and confinement due to the pandemics been beneficial or harmful to the health of the environment? Because right now we're gonna think about uh, from a point of view or a perspective that is related to the pandemic. So that's the first question. Have home office or con and confinement due to the pandemics been beneficial or harmful to the environment? And the next one is, where do you think that most solutions can come from? From being in the field working or like right now from being in your home and doing your research and also um, changing your lifestyle. So those are the next two questions. If you have any doubt, feel free to put them in the chat. We're gonna be switching into the breakout rooms. And Anna, if you could help me with that, please. Yes, so I'm creating for breakout rooms. I will open them now. And as Ibrahim was saying, we can focus on how the pandemic has changed your current projects so you can start sharing like what you usually do and what you're doing now with COVID. Okay, so you should get the notification. Thank you. No problem. Just 
Thank you so much. It's a pleasure to be here. And I hope you can get inspired with my words. And first of all, I really hope everyone is safe at home with the ones that you love. Um, unfortunately, this weekend has been really tough for me. This Sunday, I lost my grandmother. And she was a powerful, brave, and strong woman. And something I learned from her was conviction. If you don't have conviction in your beliefs, there will not be any existing reason of trying. But if you have conviction of your identity and empower to your thoughts, that will give you the, the power to, to really do something and make a difference in what you have to do. Be, having conviction means to change your impossibilities to a possibility and doing extraordinary. Therefore, today I'm going to, to talk about how, how, can I, how I got to get into the, the theme of the ocean and how I, co I started coordinating a group of 120 people from all around the world um, without ever imagining it. And I think it's something that you cannot think in the future that you will do, but you are doing it. First of all, I could possibly say that my journey started since I got invited to the COP as a youth delegate of Mexico, but no, my journey started since I was nine years old and I was a really sportive person and I played badminton. And also I got to national, international and continental competitions. And let me tell you that since then, I get to know what was the meaning of responsibility, compromise and action. And most of all, love of what am I doing? And I thought I was going to play badminton my whole life, but um, unfortunately one day I hurt my grace and never played badminton ever after. And I didn't know I was going to get passion to something else the same way I was with the sport. And until uh, I found out that I can really make a difference, not only with the people I'm with, but I can make a difference all around the world. 
or just by little step, as says Anna. After I hold my wrist, a lot of and a lot of therapy happened. I decided to occupy my time through different things, and I entered to an NGO that is called Plant for the Planet. And I worked there, helped with different activities, planting trees, helping with the conservation of natural spaces. And one day of, of, of October, um, I received a particular mail from the United Nations that I was being invited as an observer representing Fund for the Planet at the Conference of the United Nations on the Climate Change. Something important to say is that I always wanted to be part of the United Nations as, and I want to be the Secretary of the General, the General Secretary of the United Nations one day. <laughs> and after I received that mail, I decided to do something in in that moment, I didn't have um, the enough resources, economical resources to go to the, to the event. So what I did is that I started spreading interviews and I started uh, creating a video. In that video, I, I shared with all the people. And there is the place, there is a the moment that you can see how people is needed of good news, how people is needed of good actions, of good people, of people that inspires. And that was inspiring me so much. And one day I was in a, in a radio interview and I say, well, I need economical support for the, for the airplane. And also because I'm, a, uh, I'm not old enough to go to travel by myself, I need to take my mom. So I was searching for my mom and myself. And well, the people say like, okay, I will give you 100 pesos. They were like, yes, please give, it doesn't matter what amount. Little by little, I achieved all the amount. And one day, one person called me and said like, hey, I want to help you. And he, his name is Sector. I want to help you. And I want to help you with the airplane. And I say, okay, fine. And he said, okay, but first you, you need to have an interview. So I got with him. We got the interview. And something so impressive that happened is that he is right now my advisor in the, in the group that I'm coordinating. So before telling that about that group, I want to tell you like the moment that I arrived to the COP, I found out that I was a lot of people, a lot of youth, youth activists doing something all around the world. And I thought, I didn't thought I was the only one, but I didn't know a lot of people doing a lot of stuff. And I was really amazed of all the people and the conviction they have, the the all the, all the things they were thinking about and how they transmit it to the other people. So um, I also see a lot of people and a lot of adults that were crying in the conference saying like, every time I, I, my, my city passes through a hurricane, everything is destroyed and I don't know what to do. So in one hand, and I have the people, the youth activists that is always working, always passionate about. On the other hand, you can see people that is um, really, really sad and really uh, preoccupied, really worried about um, what is happening in their city and in the country and all around the world and is not doing what it should do. So I decided to really create an impact in something, but I really didn't know in what. After one day, um, I was invited in a, in a panel and then I started to say, okay, I live near a coast zone and I get to know that 6 million people, more or less 600 million people near, near, live near a coast zone and I'm one of them and I'm vulnerable of the, of the effects of the climate crisis. And I said, okay, this is my plan. This is my journey. I will, have, I will really get to know this and I will be in the service of the ocean. That day is when I started to say and to notice that is a moment to act. So um, I started uh, sending messages and in the, in the ocean working group that we have, we started creating plans and I started talking to people like, hey, we need to do something for the ocean. Let's do it, let's work. And through three months that we have right now, uh, we are now 120 people working towards the ocean and we present 38 I'm countries really all around the world. Sorry. <laughs> Yesterday we have a conference and our Trisha, first project could we please is pause? to create an impact and 
okay. I'm gonna in stop the, the sharing. In, in a stage from Spain that okay. is Mar Menor. Welcome everyone back to the main session. We're gonna create another breakout room and we'll mix everyone up. If by any chance you end up with the same people you started with, come back to the main session and I will reassign you to a new group. Does that sound good? Perfect. Yeah, that sounds great. Thanks, yes. Anna. Recreate, assign automatically. Okay, perfect. So um, I'm creating them now. You'll get the notification. Y por ahí, ¿te sale la notificación para que te unas? Ok, thank you so much, um, Drisha and Vishnu. If you could play again the video that you were playing before, it'd be great. Thank you so much. Hello everyone and uh, greetings to your excellencies, distinguished guests, uh, ladies and gentlemen, our pop stars and the youth. Uh, it's a real privilege to be able to speak to you today. I know we are running a little over time and uh, as a lot of the points that I wanted to make have already been made by the excellent speakers before me, uh, I, will, I will restrict my intervention to mentioning two uh, studies that I think have great importance in the discussions that we're having here today. So one of these is actually a study that was done by colleagues of mine that I was also involved in uh, at the International Institute for Applied Systems Analysis. And what this study was really trying to do was really to understand how um, vulnerabilities vary across the globe, not only to, uh, you know, potential exposure of global, uh, global risks, but also to understand how multiple risks are overlaid and how hotspots emerge that are areas where these multiple risks exist. So in this particular study, what we really tried to understand was not only the severity of climate change and the hazards that emerge from that, but also what is the spatial distribution of populations, how this will change over time, and what is vulnerability and capacity to prepare and manage risks. So in this particular study, we looked at indicators related to energy risks, land risks, and water risks. And we looked at this over a period of the next century, focusing really for up to the middle of the next of the century, that is up to 2050. And uh, what we found, what we concluded from this was that although the global exposure to multiple risks 
in terms of uh, land area, global land area, will be a very small fraction. But in fact, the risks to human populations will be very large because much of this global area that is hotspots of multiple risks occur in coastal areas and other areas of high population density. So in fact, areas where you will see increased heat stress, water stress, and variability up to 2050 will be these coastal areas and areas of high population density where hotspots will emerge. And what we also realized is in the process of this research that in fact, the risks, the population that are exposed to these risks will double between an end of the century temperature rise of two degrees as opposed to 1.5 degrees. So in other words, if we were to restrict temperature rise to less than 1.5 degrees by the end of the century, we can really halve the population dependent on or exposed to these multiple risks. So this is an extremely important thing because we also found that, of course, these areas are not equitably distributed over the globe. In fact, Asian regions and uh, African regions and coastal Asian and African regions in particular will be areas where over 75% of the population could be living in these areas of multiple risks. So the whole equity dimension of the changes that we're looking for are extremely important in any of the management that we think about as we go forward. The only other point I'd like to make is related to another very important report of the ocean panel that was mentioned already that came out last year. So this particular report of the ocean panel, this high level panel for the oceans was on looking at possible oceans related mitigation options. We've talked a lot about what we are doing wrong. We've talked a lot about potential impacts for the economy of these uh, ocean related changes that we're observing. But there are also very important mitigation options that the oceans afford us. And this particular report highlighted six such mitigation options that can have a significant dent in reducing our emissions as we go forward. And I just briefly talk about these six options. So the biggest one is really ocean-based renewable energy. So in fact, there's a huge potential to use the oceans in both things like wind, offshore wind, uh, tidal energy, and um, other such options that can really help to reduce emissions in the future. Uh, and in addition, there is the issue of ocean-based transport, which we've heard about from several of the speakers today, decarbonizing our ocean freight transport and passenger transport can be another important way of mitigating emissions from the, that are ocean related in some way. Coastal and marine ecosystems are another way of really restoring improving emissions, reducing emissions by really reducing our uh, uh, salty marshes, restoring mangroves, sea grass beds and seaweeds. Fisheries and aquaculture are another important area. Shifting diets away from land-based meat to fisheries and having sustainable fisheries uh, and uh, uh, and mariculture can be a very important way also of meeting the growing food demand for protein in particular and reducing emissions at the same time. Uh, finally, the, uh, the final uh, um, mitigation option that was highlighted by this particular study was the issue of carbon storage in the seabed. Of course, this is an area where we don't have much experience yet, where a lot of investment and research is still required, and also understanding the impacts of this is still very, very important. However, these options provide a huge 
potential for us to reduce up to 4 billion tons of carbon dioxide equivalent per annum by 2030 and more than two, two and a half times that by 2050. So in fact, these options together could reduce our emissions gap by more than 20% by the middle of the century if we were to implement these smartly. Um, I, I really um, would not like to take more of your time now because I know it's very late in different parts of the world where you're joining from, but I think we need to remember these very important options the oceans afford us to also reduce emissions in, in, in addition to improving the equity, equity, the equity in, in, in the vulnerability of people and reducing impacts to uh, ocean related changes, climate changes. Thank you very much. Idrisha, hey Manish. Hey Lina. Oh hey, how are you? I'm good. How are you? Long time. Yes, yes, very long time. Oh hi. <laughs> so good how are you doing? Good, good. Okay, everybody's coming back. Welcome back, everyone. <laughs> we need more time. <laughs> yes, I know. Okay, we're doing one more round. Okay. We have the last question. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm going to bring the last question. Which is, is, what advice or suggestions would you give to other people, young leaders, so they could contribute to the conservation of our nature and wildlife? Perfect. Thank you so much, um, Sal. So I'll create the breakout rooms now so people can discuss. There is. Okay. Thank you, Anna. No, thank you, Salva, in the country. Thank you, Anna. If you could all please join the breakout rooms you were assigned, it would be great. Perfect, I think almost everyone has gone. Only Sam, we're just, oh, Kamal. We're missing Kamal to join his breakout room. Um, Drisha and Vishnu, if you could play again um, a video, please. Thank you so much. Movie me and the pop. Movie me and the pop. Cambio climatico must stop. Across the world and in every nation. Listen up, Jovenes and the new generation. The why, the old, the you in youth. Cambio climatico is the truth. There are deniers that up their profit and their buyers sell their cars with some pretty big tires. Dispose plastics in the seas, cut the trees and the homes off the bees. Let off CO2 from industries, tons of crash they release. 
we can't go on or there'll be no more biodiversities. So open your eyes, so open your eyes. and realize we need to protect our planet and the skies. Stop business as usual and all the lies. Sea level rise comes with the price. It costs the planet with each hamburger and best it dies. Don't you see we can't go on killing rhinos for a horn. Wasting food and clothes that we've hardly worn. The media for one is to scorn. Making us believe our self image is torn if we don't get the next item on the shelf that's born. So the more we shop and the more we eat, the more farming there is of meat. But tierra madre no more can take the heat. It's now or never. Save the glaciers and the waters. Save the glaciers and the waters. Stop the earth from warming and getting hotter. But we won't leave much for your son or daughter. Youth education in every nation on vulnerability and climate adaptation. Policy and business collaboration with youth-led action and innovation. We can stop climate wars, hunger and devastation. It takes realization and inspiration, but it's not too late and we're happy to stay. Con mucho conocimiento and a timely movimiento. We'll have the power and the knowledge, whether you're in school or in college, to protect our planet is our vision. Is our vision. Spread the word and our mission that together we can reduce carbon emission. It's time to get renewable, sustainable, and biodegradable. Save the earth with energy, solar, get fewer bills and more bears in the polar. Calling on youth to lead us far and become the next pop star. That's moving me and the pop. Climate change together we can't stop. So, hi, I'm Maria Jacques, a student of chemical engineering in the University Iberoamericana in Mexico City. And I am passionate about the ocean and the environment. Since I was a little child, I went two to three times a year to the ocean, ocean and all my favorite memories have been there. So, it really breaks my heart to see all these threats to the ocean and the planet and ourselves. So many people would ask themselves, why am I talking here on an ocean summit if I live in the city?
but many people doesn't really understand the link that we all have in common with the ocean. So today I want to talk really quick about some of these links that we have all taken for we that we all have taken for granted or we don't even want to see. First of all, what we eat. Do we really know where it comes from? When you go to a restaurant and you eat a tuna sushi, oh, did you know that the bluefin tuna is an endangered species? In the case of Mexico, for each 10 kilograms of fish, six kilograms comes from illegal fishing. Do you ask yourself this before eating it? Overfishing can really have a big economic impact. Two, our footprint. It doesn't matter where you are, you are consuming all the time, food, clothes, accessories, and more. Do you ask yourself all, all that's behind this? Water consumption, energy consumption, people producing it, transport, all these contribute to climate change and the excess of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. CO2 is really dangerous for oceans because when it gets in contact with water, it reacts and gets acid. So the pH decreases and this affects all the species, especially corals, and this affects the tourism and the local economy. Third, this is related to point two. two. Do you think that you are really being clean by throwing your garbage in the dump? All the things that we consume don't disappear magically. It has to end somewhere. Maybe in an open air dumpster or in the ocean. We have seen with the present crisis that medical. Hello, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. We're back. Yeah. How did it all go? I mean, my my breakout room was really insightful and really amazing, and I got to see people that I that I already knew, and we shared like great ideas. Great, awesome, wonderful. Thank you. How did it go with everyone else? Yes, I learned a lot of from all of you, from all the people that I share in the breakout rooms. Wow, they have like big experiences, too many knowledge. <laughs> Wonderful. Yeah, Great. that's amazing. So, well, um, a little bit- Maybe just a few quick that... reflections. Yeah. Do you wanna have a that few was, quick that reflections? Was okay. Yeah. So, well, for example, I really wanna share with you all that um, regarding to the last question, some advice or suggestions that we can also take into account uh, and also we can all uh, put in practice is to be open-minded, to be open-minded, to learn from people that have experience on the matter that you are really want to, uh, 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 that you want to focus on and also to be uh, open-minded into willing this, into, into um, sharing this knowledge that you will acquire to other people that might not have it and, uh, and that also be, um, that can have an, an impact or positive effect on them. So, and um, also something uh, that I really wanna add to it is talk to as much people as you can. Talk, talk, and talk. Mm, and never doubt on yourself. Be persistent, be proactive, be confident in yourself because you are the one who's want to create, who's um, wanting to create a change, and with this, you will uh, be able to reach more like-minded people and also establish some synergies, some alliances, and also have mentors and the opportunities such as this um, session that will also help you grow not just professionally but also personally. And that's it. Um, never doubt on yourself. Keep keep on using your creativity. Most people think that because we are young or um, we don't have like a degree that we cannot um, contribute to being part of the solution and also in the decision making process. But thanks to these opportunities like right now, we can be part of them. And also uh, just feel free to, to talk to anyone and because 
there's a lot of people that will hear you and um, give you its knowledge and also um, advices that might help you. Also, thank you so much, Ibra. I, I completely agree with that reflection. I think these types of sessions really help you um, learn about other projects, about what other people are doing. But unfortunately, we only had one hour for this session. So <laughs> I wish we had set out more time for this. But I, before we leave, I just want to take a picture of everyone's, everyone who's here. So if everyone who's available could turn on their camera, we will take a really quick picture and uh, we will go over to the next session we have. Okay, ready? One, two, three. Perfect. <laughs> Looking good. Thank you. Thank you. I just wanted Thank to share you, everybody. with more energy to share more, but the time is over. <laughs> yes, we need Sorry more time. <laughs> Definitely. You, now, I think something that this session has taught us is that we we have to have two hours for networking. <laughs> <laughs> it was really yeah. great meeting all of you. Let's stay in contact. Follow. Absolutely. The I think that's the most awesome. important thing. Media. Yeah. I let's think let's all stay in touch. And, and yeah, definitely. Uh, continue. All the rooms that was part of everyone was thinking alike, like <laughs> all had, were on the same side. And it was just so interesting. Yeah, I know. And it's it's often like so difficult to always be with um, people that maybe are not interested in the same things as you are. So it's really comforting and nice to have these types of sessions where you can just like share whatever's happening in your life with people who are going through the same things. I mean, even in my last breakout session, we all reached the same conclusion <laughs> that we everyone. have to engage with our community. And this is like one of the prime examples of engaging with our community. <laughs> Thank you. It's been wonderful. <laughs> Thank you so much. Nice meeting everyone. Thank you. See you Thank you, everyone. Thank you all so much. Have a great soon. day. Stay in Thank touch. Thank you. <laughs>